born professional. <laughs> well, you, that's how we're starting the video. Um, so enough. yes, we got another Dragonfall play in chat. We're gonna we'll be a little more structured with this one. We've got Adam Loper from Tabletop Minions. We're playing Howdy. some of in Time too. You may have seen us wreck shop on the lower difficulty setting, which is what we're doing Dude, right now. Check out check out my check out my candelabra. Yeah, you are a fire hazard in yep. every way, shape, or form. Absolutely. So you tonight, look comfy. <laughs> you like have nice padded armor. It looks good. Yeah, do. It does. It, it, it does. It feels good. Um, yeah. Tonight we're going to talk about independent war games that you are a fan of, Adam. Sure. And you know, with my, I need a distraction. of, of course, my insight, of course. But uh, oh, this guy's going to talk. Bring out them bells, yeah. As me mother used to say. He's the yammering on about West some stuff. In Elmgard's Temple of Sigma. Give him a good platter, and you'll draw every eye I think we've done this one, but I don't know if we've recorded it. But it's is, I think, fun. It'll be fun. Magic spy, uh, we'll slap a bunch of rats around. It'll be great. Vital intelligence on the skid we are our yield rat slappers. Yes, welcome to Rat Slappers Incorporated, everyone. Indeed. Yeah. All right, it's, it stops talking to us finally. Um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I, I turned the. No, I, I, I optimized party chat for this, so we don't have to hear them argue as much, I hope. But, uh, you know... Yeah, it's probably it'll... the best. Yeah. So this game has a lot of uh, bickering amongst the uh, unstable group of dudes. So Right. Well, and a lady. I think I'm a lady. You are. So, yeah. Lona yeah. Everyone just got sunken eyes and feels we bad shall, of course, all provide. of the time. Doesn't Lona have other lackeys oh, yeah, there they go. Right away. Right, the right off with the bickering. Yeah, exactly. Yammering. <laughs> so, uh, at, um, Adam. Yeah. Skirmish war games. Not necessarily skirmish, but independent war games. I feel like independent war games as a whole are skirmish, as by design. I, I, generally, yes, and I think that they are because it's it's just easier to some degree. Oh yeah. Uh, and and what I mean by that is like I can't take that stuff. Um. What I mean by that is that, like, skirmish war games in general, as a player, are easier as far as the building and collecting and all that crap. You know what I mean? Yeah, the buy-in's not as big. You can exactly launch. You can launch with 24 miniatures. You know, like yeah, or lower weight less. Well, mm -hmm. he, that's the thing. Is also like a lot of the games that I'm playing these days don't have a miniature line. They are what is now known as miniatures agnostic. Like Starbreach? Which, uh, Starbreach is like that, yeah, that's definitely one. Um, that's the folks over at Slow Death Games, and, uh, it's a sci-fi game. It's, uh, Starbreach is designed to be a game that's sort of, it's kind of, how am I trying to say this? They knew you probably have Space Marines, they know you probably have Stormtroopers, they know you probably have a lot of different games, so they have made a bunch of army lists that are like, when you read it, it's not called Space Marines and Stormtroopers, but you read it and you go, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying here. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, it, it's, a, it's you know, they talk about the light path and the dark path in that game, and that's basically the Jedi versus the Sith. So if you've got models that are already for Star Wars Legion, then you can just repurpose them for this game. And then they also have other ones where you're reading it, and you're like, oh, that's the Tau, that's the Eldar, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but, but they, they all, they all have, have their own unique spin to them and unique factions from what I've read, so... Right, but the idea is that that way you don't have to go out and try to figure out what models you should use. They're basically telling you, look, these are the models you can use if you already got them anyway. But they also have factions that don't, you know, like they've got like space pirates and like, you know, nomads and stuff like that. So if mm -hmm. you do want to get a little kit bashy and interesting, you can do that as well. Were you um, making a faction for them recently? I've got two different factions that I built for them. I did the nomads for one, and I did, or is it the Rebels? I don't remember. It's either the Nomads or the Rebels, and then the other one was basically, like, kind of Space Pirates. I, it's interesting, because, like, the Space Pirates, uh, their weaponry is free. You don't have to pay for it in-game. But oh, okay. nobody can, and but they don't have their own weapon list. You have to use other weapon lists from other, basically, it's it's weapons you've stolen. I like it. And nobody, nobody in your, in your faction can have the same weapon as anybody else in the faction. 
It's Got basically it. yeah, okay. a bunch of like, you know, almost like preening space pirates that are like, well, I can't take this weapon because, you know, the other guy's got that weapon, and, you know. So it's it's interesting that way. Um, but, uh... It's like, oh man, I can't have a peg leg. I can't have the same peg leg as this dude. Right, exactly. That, it would be a fashion faux pas. Yeah, that's Jimmy's yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, I, I don't know, I dig that. I think it's a cool system. I mean, it's also a free download if you go to their website. Mm -hmm. But they also have a deluxe version, which is like, I think, a $10 PDF. Plus, they also have a, uh, like a soft cover print if you're into that. I mean, they've got options, which is cool. Um, and the uh, the game, what am I trying to say? Like, the, the um, activation scheme is very much, reminds me, frankly, quite a bit of... Um, uh, bolt action, where you're oh, yeah, taking okay. your hand into a into like a, a, a dice bag, and you're pulling out, you know, either this color die or this color die, and then that's how you activate. It's not the general like 40k thing where you're like, well, I'll do all mine, and then you'll do all yours or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I like that aspect of it a lot as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a super cool game. I, I might I might have brought up. I know you like Star Breach. I might have brought us start up Star Breach first because um, Chris. Sent me like six oh, yeah. copies. Sent me like six copies to give away. So we'll be yeah. uh, we'll be giving out some in the charity stuff. So that's gonna be great. Um, yeah, no, and, and, and yeah, Chris is Chris is a really nice guy. I talked to him actually in 2019 at Epicon. Hmm? I think for the first time we talked in person for quite a while. I I played Ruin and Conquest and Esoteric Industries the last few months with Chris online. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a that's he's cool. a good dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm um, hoping to do a video with him and Elliot soon, but without being yeah, led, yeah. what else is what else is getting your rocks off right now in the indie? Um, well, I'm also uh, I have I've stayed with Kickstarters for a while, like for at least a good year. I've done as as few as possible to some degree. Sure. Uh, that being said, I did do a Kickstarter this year, and that is the second edition of Relic Blade. Um, by Metal King Studios. Yep. I think I got that right. Yeah. Sean Sutter. Uh, Sean Sutter. Uh, a basically nearly one man band. Um, a writer, designer, artist, sculptor. I think he might even be pouring the lead. I mean, seriously, like he's mm -hmm. he's doing astounding work. And certainly uh, a Renaissance man. I mean, I was always absolutely. when I was doing my own game, I was jealous of Sean because I was like. I'm paying thousands of dollars that this guy is just talented enough to do. God damn it! Yeah, you know? no, I mean it's it's a real benefit when you can do your own stuff and not have to pay somebody else to do it. That is mm -hmm. a big deal. Um, I, I'm I'm partially lucky that way, like in the YouTube channel, because I don't have to pay somebody to do my thumbnails or to come up with my logos or to do the graphic art stuff or the mm -hmm. photography because like that's my background. Um, there are plenty of people out there who are like, well, if I want to have good looking thumbnails and all that stuff, it's a a real, it could be a real cost, you know. But I, anyway, yeah. So I think, that, I think the, that's Relic us Blade is awesome for the, for this channel. Sure. So sure, yeah, yeah. But Relic Blade is uh, is is a, also a really cool skirmish kind of this is fantasy in comparison to sci-fi uh, from uh, Star Breach. But it is just really, I don't know. It's it's very cool. Uh, it's very cohesive, um, and I'm really looking forward to like the models that I saw that they kind of debuted and show uh, showed off. For the second edition, I was re that's what it really brought me. Like I, I wanted to, you know, get another version of the game. I think as well, but the, the models that I was seeing, I was really impressed by. So I was like, yeah. Well, I mean, with these games, I, mean, I think you like the hobby stuff so much. So it's nice for you to put together six to eight, nine guys and be like, okay, good. I'm, I'm. Th that's done. You know, like. Oh yeah, and yeah. and with um, Relic Blade, it's even fewer. I think it's generally less than five in a in a war band. I think. Ooh. Um, I, if I remember correctly, it's yeah, it's a low number, which is another thing that really drew me. I like those piggy-looking orc guys, a lot. Yeah, yeah, the the, the big, big big dudes are pretty nice. Um, but there's also a bunch of other nice models in there as well. Sure. Yeah. Except for the if there's elves, we don't care. Well, well there's that. That's a good point. Um, and then, uh, let's see, what else is there? There's, um, well, another game that I've been super interested in lately, that's also real indie, is called Planet 28. Um, Planet 28 is by Mammoth Miniatures, out of the UK. It's also a one-person band. Uh, Nick, his name is. 
uh, Nicholas um, Evans, I think, but I could be wrong on that. But um, he, it's another situation where he does the artwork, um, and again, it's miniatures agnostic, so this one doesn't, you know, you don't have miniatures, and like that. you use whatever you want. Um, the, uh, the... To our survival. There's a, there's a lot of people who are doing kit bashing. There was this game from 2001, you probably remember, called Inquisitor. It was yep. made by Games Workshop. And it was like a weird sort of pseudo between... Um, it was a little bit of a skirmish game plus RPG. And you were supposed to play like with a with a DM and uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. It was, yeah, it was and it was fifty four millimeter, which was a really weird size that nobody liked, and there was just a lot of weird things about it. People were very interested in it, but didn't actually want to play it. You know what the, I mean? I think I think interest was high, buy in was low. Right, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I own a copy of it uh, that I actually picked up at a game store within the last year. That it had been sitting in the shelf literally since two thousand one or whatever. Oh my goodness, uh, really? I actually oh, yeah, have yeah, yeah. a um, and one of the um, and I it just it's just something that came with a white dwarf for Inquisitor. I'll have to send it to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's just yeah. So like, there've been a lot of people who've been really interested in doing the kit bashing for it, and then they've been like, well, what if we take that Inquisitor idea? We strip out a little bit of the RPG, and we use Necromunda rules instead, so we can use it in 28 millimeter, and not 54 millimeter. Okay. And but like getting that all together and getting people to do the right, you know, it's really hard to get everybody on the same page. So uh, sure. Nicholas was like, "What if I just made a very simple set of rules that is designed for the kit bashing people, so they don't have to like." fight over which version of the six different online rule sets they use, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so, um, so that's where Planet 28 was born. It's like a 16-page PDF. It's really small. Yeah, I've downloaded um, it. It looks cool. Yeah, and, and, and the artwork is very reminiscent of the Rogue Trader days. It's a lot of pen and ink. It's very it's very cool that way, and the stuff that he's been doing with it is really neat. So, um, it's one of those games you can get on War Game Vault uh, that is like, I think, one of those pay what you want sort of games, you know? Yeah. So five hundred dollars. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So it's it's cool. I've been really kind of digging that, and uh, he's done already a couple of expansions that you can choose to use or choose not to use. There's a, there's a uh, solo play and co-op play expansion, which is obviously real nice in this day mm -hmm. and age. Um, and he's also made a, a vehicle expansion as well. Um, Ooh. Yeah, so, you know, I'm not a big fan sometimes of vehicles in skirmish games, because I'm like, I feel like if you want vehicles, that's what your army we're style no game longer, is We're for. no longer skirmishing. This is right, now a little a, bit. This is now a conflict. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We have to refuel. So, but anyway. This this, what, the cannon we have to refuel? No, I'm saying we have to refuel our vehicles. Like, there's... there's oh, I see. There's, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do not let that bomb go to waste. So, yeah, it's a whole thing. But, um, yeah, that game is also really cool. I, uh... Um, I'm, I'm digging that. I mean, it's the benefit for me is that it's it's a small game, you know. And it's it's quick, it's simple, and you can modify the game. Uh, like it's the big benefit to me, and it's different than some of these other games. Like Star Breach, you have army lists that you follow. Mm -hmm. In Planet 28, you don't. You like they're like, look, here's a bunch of weapons. You make your own people. There's no army lists. You can even customize your weapons. You'd be like, I want a laser gun, but it's also poisonous. And he'll give you the points costs for all of that kind of stuff, you know. Okay. And so, and and I like that a lot. I'm I'm kind of there's a part of me that's like I kind of almost don't want to play games anymore where I have to go download a specific army list or I have to go like I want to make my own army list. You know, I want to completely do my own thing that you way. Want, so you want possible. some creativity from front to back? Yeah. Now the problem is, is that in many situations, those types of games can be very easy to break. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, we say exactly. that at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So um, then the trick is, is that well, let's not try to be so competitive about it. You know what I mean? Oh, if you're yeah, gonna be like, yeah. I'm going to play this in tournaments. Well, then yeah, obviously you need to kind of have unified army lists. But if you're just like going to have a fun time and play some games, then I want to be able to like. And cool stuff and as much as a lot of these indie companies want to have tournaments it's not it's not the reason no. for the season no no absolutely if you're going to play a tournament you're going to have to play a game that basically kind of almost everybody seems to play and if not then you know 
focus more on the narrative, on the narrative, honestly. Somebody seems to be... I, was a, I had a bot to save. I gotcha. So yeah, anyway, those are the three that I've been... Well, I, I mean, is Osprey considered to be indie? No. Okay. I mean, well, I, we could talk about... I've been, Whatever. I've been really, I've been really enjoying Zona Alpha lately too, and I know you're a fan of the overall background. Oh yeah, the brothers Strugatsky. The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, yeah. it basically Zona Alpha is based off of um, the book. Um, a roadside uh, picnic. Roadside picnic. Yep, and uh, which then roadside picnic kind of inspired uh, a movie from the late 70s called Stalker, which is a Russian film, which then turned into, well, then, I don't want to say it made it a video game, or, like, it inspired a video game called Stalker, and then, um, which also kind of, in, uh, Metro 2033, there's been a bunch of different things, but the, the guy who decided yeah. to write this game, uh, he's basically listed all these things as influences in the, you know, forward so what's cool about Zona Alpha? Or the um, soccer in Zona, general? Zona Alpha is interesting because it's it, it's frequently com uh, uh, cooperative. That's um, great. I love that shit. Yeah, so it's like it's designed so that you're playing a game... I mean, you can technically sometimes fight against the other players, but there are factions in the game. And if you play this faction and your opponent's playing another faction... If those factions are allied in any way, for you to fight against each other, you actually have to make willpower checks to be able to do that. You can't just decide, oh, I'm going to turn on this on these guys. You know, if they're if they're an opposing faction, it's a different story. But you're basically it reminds me a lot of Mordheim a little bit. It reminds me a lot of Frostgrave, where you're going into this place to try to get treasure and to try to get out. Like that. Yeah, but the it's, point. it's but really the the other stalkers you're running into are like you're like okay, this is just another guy doing my job, and. To some degree, yeah. yeah, and there's definitely competition in that fashion. Mm -hmm. But generally, it's not a game about just trying to shoot each other. You know what I mean? Sure. And again, if you're if you're if you've got like if you've got a, a an ally, if, if if I'm running cultists and you're running I don't know scientists or something like that, there's a very good chance that you know you would be difficult for you to attack them because maybe you're allied or whatever. Sure. I forget, like, there's military, there's scientists, there's cultists, there's traitors. There's a bunch of different factions in the game, which I think is also interesting. Because a so, lot of different people want to go into this area. A lot of the stuff with um, the stalker stuff that's fascinating, it's basically like aliens came, yep. checked out left Earth, and then left, and then, like, didn't clean up after themselves? So right, we're, exactly. we're like a bear coming onto a campsite with, like, checking out kerosene. Right. Yes, with the same so result. Right, so it, the, the idea is is that these people go into the, these exclusionary zones, and sometimes they find amazing treasures that are really super cool, and other times they find uh, just a small patch of grass that turns them inside out, and they can't tell, you know what I mean, yeah. what they're going to come across. So, yeah. Oop, I, I thought I heard something. I got a guy on my neck. Oh, there you go. But, I can't take credit for that rescue. Oh, well, that, uh, bots are doing their work. That's fine. Um, but yeah, so it's it's kind of cool that way. And again, being miniatures agnostic, and it's not sci-fi particularly. It's like modern. You it's know what I mean? It's pulpy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. If it's if it's designed like the Zona Alpha, at least is like you're using you know AR-15s and AK-47s and okay. you know stuff like that. Uh, but it does have a little bit of pulp because there's also the cultist aspect to it, which uh, I didn't realize originally. I thought I really the rules. But yeah, those are those games I think are really cool, and I, I really like that kind of stuff. That's a bit more narrative, a bit more small scale. I'm not super interested in the big army games these days, and partially it's because it allows me to be able to spend more time painting a specific, you know, group of say five or six models instead of having to paint. 150, you know? So I would say with the big army games, the reason for your fighting is all like the, the is all in the fluff, and it's always Generally, only yes. fighting. Whereas with these skirmish games, there can be like narrative things that happen on the table that oh, yeah, definitely. is completely different than. I mean, you're not having if you have 30, 40 miniatures on the table, the treaties have broken apart. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. And so I, I like that. I just like the. I've been doing a lot more kit bashing, yeah, and, and some even not kit bashing, like um, for my Zona Alpha stuff. The majority of the, basically almost everything I bought for Zona Alpha to start making crews for that mm -hmm. have been um, from uh, a company called Anvil Industry out of the UK. Sure. And they make mostly resin and uh, uh, just like super modular, really fun stuff. It's just really interesting to kind of put together. Um, you can just literally go through and be like, all right, I'm going to buy this set of legs and then a set of torsos and then a set of heads and then this set of guns. And they basically almost kind of like snap on to the hands. So, and it's just, everything's, it's really smartly designed. As a person who's put together a lot of models from other companies and stuff like that, I'm really pretty impressed with these uh, these models that I'm buying for uh, to use for Zona Alpha. Mm -hmm. So I've been real happy with that. Gonna have to, I'm going to have to add all these links. Okay. Oh my goodness, 350... <laughs> this is what happens when I distract you. This is what happens when I what distract happened? you. But did, I, did, I, did I hit anybody? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I was not, I was not, uh, I'm not doing so hot. No, but I made you talk about stuff. So That's, that's fine. Yeah. My, yeah. No, so, yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. So, um, I think people are going to know you, but I think let's always do a little little end cap here of what's Tabletop Minions. Good evening. Uh, it is a day, eh? channel, um, YouTube, Twitch, uh, Instagram. We're starting to finally pay a little bit closer attention to Twitter and do a little bit more work there. Um, technically Facebook, but uh, I'm sort of tired. Of yeah, what is Facebook. this? You anyway. going, going, going for a retirement community? You don't want Facebook. Exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, so I've been doing, uh, it's mainly about teaching people about tabletop wargaming, how to get into it, how, um, it's not as difficult to paint as you might think. It's not as difficult to, you know, learn the rules and all that kind of stuff and, and all that jazz. So yeah, um, you can look for me on YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, all under tabletop minions. And the link below. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Thank you.